mom like taught mm. me about life no matter how much money you have or how many things good things you have you know those are your house on those stuff but i always stay humble I yeah myself i don't want like money on changing yeah all the cars that i have i want changing all the stuff that i have good stuff you don't i mean you don't yeah oh yeah my God. i just i'm i just try to be myself this is how i like the, the girl that came from the village i'm still the same girl Hello everyone and welcome to Uninterrupted with me, David Mbeha. It is so incredibly, um, what is the word, satisfying, uh, pleasing, joyful to be joined by the fastest woman in Namibia. Uh, from humble beginnings to becoming a national treasure, Kristen Boma um, became a national treasure in 2020 when she won the first ever or when she became the first woman to win the first silver medalist for the country which was an incredible moment uh it's such a humbling experience to sit with her on this episode and to you know dig uh deeper into her story i am so delighted to be sitting next to you christine boba how are you i'm good how are you i am fantastic thank you so much for you know uh, gracing us with your presence, I first want to go back to Shinyungwe, right? Yeah. That is where you were born. What was it like uh, growing up or, you know, just the whole experience? I mean, growing up in the village, like my village, Yeah. I mean, it was not that hard. I mean, it was not that easy because, you know, at the age of uh, 15, I lost my mom and I have to stay with my grandmother. Mm. And if, even though uh, like, I was not having a mom, I was like having a dream. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, um, your story is one that really, it really touches me because I lost my mom at 19 and I can just imagine what that experience was like losing your mother mm. at such a young age but also when i you know look into your story it is truly a representation of what god can do with your life if you allow him because you were already talented from that time did yeah. you know that you were talented you know growing up yeah i started running at a young age i like only for school going to rundo and come back i didn't know that i will run for Namibia. but i just had the i mean what is the love for the sport yeah. Okay, but when you lost your mother, um, what, how old were you? you said? I was 15. 15. No, 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 I was 13. 13? No, not 15, 13. 13. Yeah. So then, uh, what happened immediately after two? Did you start living with, you said, your grandparents? Yeah. And what was that life like growing up? You know, uh, did you know that, what did you make sense of the fact that your mother is no longer alive? Were you aware at that age? Or yeah. was life just normal? No, I, I was aware because, you know, when I used to stay with my mother, mm. she always, like, st make me stay at home mm. and to study, to help her with her stuff. And I didn't, ha like, I didn't have time to go out there and, like, maybe to play with other kids and all the stuff. I only go to school and come back home, you know. It was, like, I mean, living with my grandmother, it wasn't, I mean, it was not that easy yeah. because, like, how my mom was, like, taking care of me, it's not the same way my grandmother was. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And you also had to take care of your two yeah, siblings. Yeah, yeah. So you had to grow up mm. faster, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point do you then move to Grotefontein? Um, I was, like, running for, what is this? Uh, I qualified for the uh, national for the school stuff. Mm. Uh, I was so, so uh, I was selected for, I mean, to go to Eswatini. Mm. Then I went there to run uh, uh, 801.5 and I won two gold medal. I came back home and I went back to the village and I thought that I'm done with running so I have to uh, like 
just stay at the village. Yeah. yeah, it was good experience going there, but I was on newspaper. Uh, then like you know, some people saw it and like they were willing to give me scholarship to pay for my scholarship and all the stuff. Okay. And then I moved to Crofantin. Okay, that's how you go to Agri College. Mm. Okay. Um, moving to 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 Hrothfontein, did you immediately start living with your coach, or how? What was the living situation in Hrothfontein? Uh, first, I was living. I'm um, sleep. I mean, I was staying. <laughs> sorry, I was staying. I was staying in the hostel. Okay. Yeah, and after that, then I moved to the farm to stay with my coach. Okay. Mm. Okay. And then, what was your practice schedule like? Would you run every day after school? What was the preparation? It was like. In the morning, I'll go to school and like I'll I'll go to school, and uh, around three or five there. I think five. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go after for school. yeah after school. Then I'll I'll go and uh, like go for training. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, you are not in touch with your siblings. So what was the communication like with your two siblings? Yeah, but yeah, when I moved to Kroven, uh, it was hard because like I miss my family, I miss my my my, my two sister, so it was so hard. But right now I'm staying with them here in Winter. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So let's go back to 2020. Mm. You go and run uh, in Tokyo. Was that the, the your first time uh, go running in at an international race or? And first, first I, I was like early that year. I went to Europe. Uh, yeah, okay. I went to Europe and uh, I was to what is this? Yeah, I went to Europe to qualify for what is uh, for Olympic. Mm -hmm. And that time, no one in Namibia knew about me. Yeah. yeah. And I just went there, just you know, to to try my best. And then I I won my first all my race there in in Europe. My I like my trip to. Uh, to Europe, I won all the races, mm -hmm. all the continental tour, and after that, then I came back home. I prepared to to go to Tokyo. Yeah. Okay. So let's say you arrived in, in Tokyo because obviously mm -hmm. you are preparing to run. But uh, what was the city like for you the first time being in Tokyo? What was that like? I mean, first time I was like, oh. Wow. I like it's beautiful, <laughs> and everything was like perfect. How the plane it, it yeah. perfect, and a bit also like I was a bit nervous yes. because I, I I really don't understand like all the race that I ran, it's just like continental tour. Just run like you just run once, then okay. you are done. But that one you just have to qualify, and I don't, that was my first time to run Olympic. I don't know all the, you know, I just have to watch YouTube videos like for all the Olympians. Yes. Yeah, the, like all those Olympic yes. like 2012 to understand, to try understand to understand like, like yeah. yeah. But I was just a bit scared but my coach always tell me, uh, like, you know, always tell me I must just like focus, I don't have, I don't have to mind other people mm. and you know, I'm always tell like always tell me like like just say some word that make me feel happy, yeah. like you are the boss and all the stuff like yeah. yeah. So, so that you you get that. Yeah, yeah. Is it what yeah. Boss, always so ask me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you always ask me who's the boss. Then I'll be like I'm the boss. <laughs> boss. Yes. Yes. Mm. So then the day finally came and you won that uh, silver medal. Which was the first you then became the first ever woman in Namibia. Did you know how huge that was, or were you? Did you understand like how the magnitude of how big um, that opportunity was? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand because you know, first I, I when I, I like I read the final, I was so scared. I, I didn't know that I would win any medal. Mm. I was just praying to get that. Let me just finish my yeah. race mm. without injury. Mm. Yeah, let me just do my best, and yeah, I just try my best. And I was, you know, if you watch the race, I was a bit scared, nervous there at the end. That's why, like, I try to push. Mm. And if I was not nervous, I could be maybe first. Yeah, yeah. but that was like uh, one of the 
great moment. It was like winning, I mean, to be the first person that, it's not, you know, most people only understand it's just, I mean, they only know that it's just a silver. Yeah. But to me, and other people would understand or follow the, uh, I mean, sport. I mean, it, it means a lot. Because I, I broke the, the world junior record, African record, and I, I became the first like women to run sub-22 in Africa mm-hmm. and, you know, all those stuff, like, I mean, it means a lot to me and it means a lot to my country. Yeah. And I'm very proud of myself and proud to be in Namibia. Yes, and we're also proud of you. You know, I'm listening to your story and all these um, achievements that you've had, but at the same time, you are so humble. What keeps you humble? Yeah, for me, this is how my, my you know, my mom, like taught me about life no matter how much money you have or how many things good things you have you know those or house on those stuff but i always stay humble i'll yeah. be myself i don't want like money won't change me yeah. all the cars that I have I won't change me all the stuff that i have good stuff it don't i mean it don't yeah, yeah i just i'm I just trying to be myself this is how i like the the girl that came from the village, I'm still the same girl. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, you are the reason why I started this show is for people to be able to hear stories like this, <laughs> stories of humble beginnings, and for them to also be able to have that hope that if it can happen for her, mm-hmm. it can happen for me. Yeah. You know, because we all have, you know, humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. When I look at my story, away I. St- I came from and where I am now, I want people to know that it's possible. And I think you are just the perfect representation yeah. of, of that. And you remaining humble and understanding who you are. You know, you said the cars, the houses, all the amazing achievements, mm. they, they will never change you. Mm. Um, how do you think your mom would have reacted to the success that you have had? She would be so proud of me because I always tell, told her that when I like when I finish my school or if I start working, I'll buy you my car. Like I'll buy you a car. Yeah. But you know when I bought my first car, it's written Shago. It's my mother's, oh my, like, my mother's, mother's name, and my my grandmother was so proud of me that most of my property are named after my mom. So it's so. I like she's so proud of me, yeah. and uh, also like just to keep her name. I don't want to forget her name, and that's why I just have some a few of my properties just name her after her. Yeah, uh, you know it's like I'm listening to you speak, and the way that you have honored your mom um, is, is 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 amazing. You know, and I think that's why you will continue to prosper in your life because. You, have, you don't forget where you are and the people that were there mm. even before you. And I feel you will continue to also be successful because of the prayers that they always had for you. Mm. You know, um, your siblings, what, do, what do, do they understand like your success? Are they old enough to understand it? Yeah, yeah uh, they are old enough to understand. Because I always tell them about like my money, yeah. All my stuff that like I, I spoil them sometimes, yes. Yes. But I always tell them that they must work hard for themselves and I won't force them like to become athletes. Because the the younger one, she she loves fashion, she likes drawing and all the stuff. Like she she always tells me that she wants to become a fashion model. Yeah. So I will support her. I support her and I I just advise them and I don't tell them what to do. Like, you know, about, like, you know, how to live their life. I mean, I mean I, if they are doing bad things, then I will tell them. I'm their parent, yeah. and they have to listen to me. If they won't listen to me, then there's no one out there, like, yeah. yeah. So now, you know, you are now on this platform where you've uh, achieved this celebrity status. Who's the first person that, you know, whether it's a DM or just an interaction and you were shocked? Mm. Uh, maybe just as anybody, whether it's an athlete, a celebrity, an actor, actress, mm. is there anybody that you remember maybe DMing you or just 
uh, interacting with and you thought, I, I never thought I would meet this person? Well, who's this? Um, the first, my, my, you know, my, my, you know, my favorite athlete was Talu mm -hmm. and Shelly. Yes. And after I won the Olympic, and she came to me and then she was like, hugged me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I almost died. It was like, I ran with them and yes. then I beat them and then they came to me and said those stuff. I always watch them on TV. Yes. And now this happened. I was so like yeah. happy and after that she reposted my stuff. Yeah. And then I was so happy. Yeah. It was a good moment, you know, when <laughs> you look up to someone and you feel you meet them and they're actually also very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like you are you are you are exactly like that because when people meet you, they meet the real human being. They don't meet the superstar, mm. you know, and that is really, really uh, beautiful. How do you maintain that? Um, I just, <laughs> I, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Like going out there, you know, people will always be like, Boma, Boma. They yes. will be like, <laughs> they will be like, good people will come to you, like, just ask you, can I take a picture? Or, just want to try to talk to you nice. Yes. And then out like there's some people who will be like, Mama, come here. And that for me, I have short temper. Yeah. I, I, I'm a cool person. I don't like talking, but if I'm angry, sometimes I can be scary. Like when somebody Yeah, but you. I, I, I avoid doing those stuff too, like in public, even yeah. though like if someone disrespects me, yes, I would just yes. smile and thank them and then I would just walk away. Yes. Because I don't have time for like, you know, Someone, you know, even like people on uh, social media trying to uh, comment bad thing about me. Mm. I I don't care because I I can't, like no like they can't uh, they don't contribute anything to my life. Exactly. And then I don't know them. I don't know where they stay, but they know more about me. So I don't mind those like whatever they say. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm just living my life. I'm, yes. I, they, yeah. And and if anybody understands your story they would know that such, whether somebody goes on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and writes something bad, it, it will never harm you because where you come from was already hard enough yeah. that everything else feels so, so simple. And yeah. you, are, you are far ahead. And I think also people project a lot of stuff. They see how successful you are, how oh. everything is working out well for you, mm -hmm. and they want to try and put you down. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you, you, you understand Mm. Uh, that. But then how do you, what is your process of filtering like the bad comments, whether somebody says it, how do you get rid of that? Now for me, if like if some, like I'm not a person who like, 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 you know, sometimes I go there and I read comments. Yeah. And or sometimes I just uh, leave, I mean, give it to my friend because I, first I like, I used to be, I like get hurt when I yes. like people, but I now, also used to feel yeah, <laughs> but now I decided no, yes. I won't, I won't, I will never, yes. I will just like, if you say bad thing about me, that would be my last time to see my social media, I would just block Because you're going to block me? I would just block you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're going to catch a block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, I always block people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is amazing. But what mot motivates you to keep going in life? You know, what motivates me to, you know, to, to keep, like, you know, like, because, you know, my, my mom. Yeah. All the problems that I, 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 I you know, I, I say to my mom and then my sister, my yeah. grandmother. You know, my grandmother, I went to the village this, I mean, the, uh, last month. Yeah. And then to check out the new house that I built for her. Yeah. You know, so happy because, like, seeing my family happy, and that makes me happy. It's not yeah. only my family. It's just like, I like doing, helping, like, a lot of people now. Yeah. I do it th I mean do help people but I don't like go on social media, oh I helped this person, I did this because yeah. I'm doing like I'm not doing it for myself, mm -hmm. I'm doing it for the person. So I just like seeing people happy, especially my family make me yeah, that happy that you. keep me mod like you keep going always. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that that is really that's really, really amazing. And what makes you happy? Me. I, as I said earlier, yeah. my family makes me happy. Your family makes you happy. Yeah. 
What do you like to do in, in, your, free t- in your free time? Uh, you know, I'm always busy, but when I'm free, I just, I just go with my friend, like go for a movie, mm-hmm. go play games, or we just sit and then we just, you know, talk. Oh, we just, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, okay. Uh, you also have a, a brand that is out, I think it's, a, a, what is it called? Mboma Streetway. Mboma Streetway. Mm. Yeah, how did you come up with that? Has it always been a dream? Of yeah, yeah, like, like, you know, if I take you back to the village, my mom always, you know, she always, you know, like, you know, it's, uh, like sewing, sewing, yeah. Yeah, sewing with a needle, like making us skates and all the stuff. Yeah. And then she would like go to what is this? What is this? Is this Chicago, whatever. Chicago, Chicago yeah, yeah. yeah. To go buy like is sacks. Chicago, Chicago yeah. and yeah. buy yeah. sack of like clothes. So she used to like sell the stuff and all the stuff. Yeah. And I used to help her to like to sell the stuff. Yeah. You know, okay. when I'm free. Yeah. And then I was like. One day I want to have my own shop, you know, the stuff like, yeah, I, I was about like my dreams to, to buy my mom a sewing machine yeah. and, and, and open for her like a, a studio where she can do everything, but unfortunately it didn't work out. So I just like, I was planning that one day when I have money, mm-hmm. um, I will, yeah. 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 yeah, I started like, I started the stuff 2021, designing my logo. And then, then I was like a busy, like busy to to you know to do, like to bring the stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this year, like this year, then I decided let me just you know, uh, yeah, you know, start, try to launch the stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah, we are launching the the website soon. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. You know, and I think I, I really would want. To support when it's a photo shoot from a street way yeah Mm. okay and uh, to conclude this uh, uh, amazing you know session the reason why you know we started this show we want success to feel tangible you know like I said in the beginning we want people to know that if it can happen from Boma, it might not be necessarily Mm. uh, the running aspect for everyone but everyone has something that God has given to them and you know if you look in deep and you find that which god has given to you you're able to use that to thrive in life like how you have been able to use your 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 your, your talent mm. um so i just want to thank you for that and thank you for being a national treasure but also for sharing your story mm. authentically and you still remain who you are no matter what you know like you said money will never change me cars will never change you because you know, you have had all these things. Mm. You've had all these things and it has never, you are not phased by it. Mm. Um, so that is really, really amazing. What would you say to somebody who is out there, uh, maybe finds themselves in a place like Shinyungwe mm. uh, and hoping that one day they can be able to also just get to where you are? What would you say to someone like that? I'll, I'll say to them because like I always go there to the village and, and, mm. and I talk to the people. You know, just have, if you have a dream, don't don't just throw it away. You just have to like work hard every day. For me, I believe that I mean success. I mean it's just hard work for me. I believe it's hard work. Without hard work, uh, nothing will happen. They may just just like. Uh, if they like for I'm mean, I'm talking about like sport people, mm. not only sport people, also like the people who's like in school, just have to work hard. Yeah, uh, just have to you know, if you have a dream, just have to work hard for uh, like work hard mm. to achieve your dream. Mm. And even though I have like you know medals and all the stuff, but I still have a goal. I'm still working hard to uh, to achieve my goal. They must just believe in themselves. They must stay away from bad friends, mm. and they must just, you know, yeah. you know, work hard. Yeah. For me, that's the only word that I, I like to say: it's work hard. Yeah. Without work hard, nothing, nothing will happen. Yeah, work hard and perseverance. Mm. Um, 
uh, years from now, let's say 100 years, when people watch <laughs> this video and they see you, what would you like them to remember you for? Me? Yeah. Um, no. Hmm. I think just, just like, mm. I don't know, just me, Christine, we have only one hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> and red very fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also the hairstyle is iconic. <laughs> it's, it's a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So just also for being who yeah. I think if I can summarize it for just being yourself. Yeah, be myself. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uninterrupted. Yeah. <laughs>